السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear colleagues and friends uh, as usual it's my pleasure to be with you uh, today we are going to discuss one of the hot topics uh, especially in the exam the last time when we had the practice session we closed the session by a discussion about the pregnancy after renal transplant uh, so today I'm going to discuss uh, this topic which appeared uh, frequent times in the last exams. So in the exam, it will appear as a structured discussion case. Um, you will have this as a structured discussion assessing the patient safety, communication with colleagues, information gathering, and applied clinical knowledge. So you will be an ST5 in the antenatal clinic, and you are asked to see Mrs. Sally Smith, which is 35 years old lady. Uh, the scenario came as the patient is 36 weeks pregnant in her first pregnancy. She had a renal transplant three years ago. And now she is on stable graft on treatment. So many treatments were there. Brednisolone, alcyobrine, cyclosporin, aspirin, tacrolimus, nifedipine, uh, and the low molecular weight heparin. Uh, she's booked for cesarean section next week by her consultant, but she feels that she has been rushed for the cesarean section and she's keen for vaginal delivery. She wants to discuss with you uh, this uh, option. Her last investigations were attached and the observations, uh, the hemoglobin 10 gram, the ferritin is normal, the platelets 150,000, the creatinine is 92. Uh, the virology screening for hepatitis B and HIV is negative. Uh, the ultrasound is normal. Uh, estimated fetal weight is more than, uh, than 10, uh, 10 centile and was normal Doppler. And the blood pressure chart was normal. All the readings were less than 140, 90, and there was albumin one plus. So uh, the scenario in this case or the agenda, the consultant wants to discuss the case with you before you will see Ms. Smith. Uh, during the discussion, your consultant will provide you further information when you ask it for. So you will be given further information if you ask for this information. So what is the agenda? You have to obtain more relevant clinical data, uh, outline and justify your management plan and answer the examiner questions. Uh, all the possible questions in this station will go it is in a question and answer form, which makes it easier. So uh, the possible questions are starting by uh, giving a summary about the patient from the case notes. You will be asked what are the inv indications of cesarean section from her notes, and what is the relevant clinical data you want to know from the history. What are the risks during pregnancy and during labor, and how to reduce these risks during pregnancy and during delivery? Uh, you will be asked about the course of her antenatal care and how to monitor the mother and the baby during pregnancy and during labor. And if there is any special precautions, if this lady will go for cesarean section. And what are the precautions in the third stage of labor? And if there are any specific recommendations, regarding the postpartum care of this lady. So these are all the possible questions that you may be asked in this station to be assessed in the four domains, patient safety, information gathering, communication with colleagues, and applied clinical knowledge. And here I'm going to uh, highlight what, uh, uh, what are the answers that uh, can give an idea or can give an assessment about you in these parts. So the first question is give a summary about the patient from the case notes. When you enter the station, the examiner will ask you to give a summary about the case. This will assess your information gathering. So always when you will be asked, give a summary about the case in the exam, always use the SPAR form. So mention the situation, the background, the assessment, and then the recommendation. The situation here, 
Mrs. Sally Smith is 35 years old lady. She's prime gravida now at 36 weeks pregnant. The background, this lady had renal transplant three years ago with a stable graft on treatment, prednisolone, as a cyprine, tacrolimus, aspirin, nifedipine, and cyclosporin. The assessment will be the investigations here. Her HB is 10 gram. The ferritin is normal. The HB is a little bit below normal, but this will be accepted in patient with renal transplant. The ferritin is normal. The platelets is 150,000. The creatinine is 92, which is within the normal range. The hepatitis B and HIV screening are negative. The blood pressure chart is normal with the last readings all below 140 over 90. There is albumin 1 plus and the ultrasound uh, and Doppler are normal. So this is the first question which will assist the information gathering. The second question, the examiner will ask you, what are the indications of the cesarean section from her notes? So in the notes, the patient was booked for cesarean section by her consultant. So from her notes, in this case, the data given, there is no indication for cesarean section. So as the maternal indications and the renal function tests are stable and also the ultrasound and Doppler are normal. So there is no obvious indication from the notes for cesarean section. So your answer will be, I will discuss with the consultant for his views regarding the indication of cesarean section. And this assists your communication with colleagues. After discussion with the consultant, her delivery can be delayed up to 40 weeks, up to 40 weeks, but you are still at 36 weeks. So you have to repeat the ultrasound for gross and Doppler, and also you have to do weekly blood pressure and the biochemical test to check if this patient may develop preeclampsia at any time. This will assist the patient safety and the applied clinical knowledge. Renal transplant by itself is not a contraindication for vaginal delivery. Also, the rate of cesarean section is higher in women with renal transplant compared to those with non-renal transplant. The increased rate of cesarean section in renal transplant patient may be due to development of preeclampsia or IOGR or it may be due to iatrogenic preterm delivery. So the answer of this question, from the notes, I cannot find the indication for cesarean section. So I will discuss with here the consultant for his views regarding the indication of cesarean. Maybe he knows something else you don't know. So you have to discuss with him. And if there is no indication, this patient can have vaginal delivery as there is no contraindication to vaginal delivery in patients with renal transplant and hair delivery can be postponed up to 40 weeks. So this will be the answer of the second question. The answer of the third question, what is the relevant clinical data you wanted to know from the history? Here the question is the relevant data you want to know from the history. So you will mention the history only. If the question, what is the clinical or the relevant clinical data you want to know about the patient, so you will add examination and investigations. So here, as he mentioned, the history is specifically, so you will only mention the further data you need to know from the history. So for the presenting history, always ask about the pregnancy at the beginning, because the main issue, why the patient is here for you, because she's pregnant. So how is her pregnancy so far? If there is any coexisting hypertension or proteinuria that may change, the course of management. The cause of kidney transplantation is very important. In this case, the cause will be answered by the examiner that it was diabetic nephropathy, but some cases may be due to, for example, adult polycystic kidney that may carry impact for uh, inheritance on the baby. And you have to ask when it was done to see if the graft is stable or no, and if the patient got pregnant in a suitable time after renal transplant or no. Also, in any medical condition with pregnancy, you have to ask about the follow-up with the related specialty. Here, it will be the follow-up with the transplant team. When was her last visit? And the level of renal function, 
If there is any swelling in her legs or around her eyes, the amount of urine output and the color of urine, if there is any shortness of breathing or any confusion or vomiting that may indicate deterioration in the condition. The obstetric history is important, but this lady is primary gravida. Uh, the gynecological history here, what's important to ask is the cervical smear. The medical and surgical history, this patient had renal transplant because of diabetic nephropathy, so you have to check for her control of blood uh, glucose, and you have to ask about the blood group here in this case. The drug history, you have to ask about the drug allergy, and if she received folic acid before. The social history, as usual, items, and then the family history, if any concern, like any uh, same condition in the family, especially in cases that carries risk of inheritance, but not in this case, which is known that she has renal transplant in cause of diabetic nephropathy. So this is a question of the second answer. It reflects the domain of the information gathering. The next question, what are the risks during pregnancy and during labor? And how you will reduce these risks during the pregnancy and during the delivery. So to be more organized, it's better to classify the risks into maternal risk and fetal risk during the pregnancy and during delivery. So the maternal risks and the fetal risk during the pregnancy include more possibility of development of hypertension and preeclampsia and worsening of the kidney function and recurrent urinary tract infections. And this may change the course of her management. This, she may deliver early because of this. The patient may develop thrombosis, especially in patients with high levels of protein in urine. These patients are more liable to have anemia because pregnancy and chronic kidney disease on their own can cause anemia. And due to increase the uh, requirement of erythrobiotin in pregnancy, in patients with renal transplant, they can be treated by iron tablets or iron injection, or may, they may need erythrobiotic factor. If the ferritin level is low, they may need iron and either tablets or injection. Blood transfusion is usually not recommended in these patients in pregnancy. The other risk during pregnancy for the lady to develop gestational diabetes. Pregnancy itself may be a reason to alter the blood control or the body's control of blood glucose. This may be worse in patient being treated with steroids in cases of renal transplant. So if the patient is not diabetic, you have to consider doing a glucose tolerance test at the booking visit and to be repeated again at 24 weeks because this patient is at high risk. If the patient is diabetic, she will need the regular follow-up with the endocrinologist and in this case. So the maternal risks during pregnancy will be hypertension and preeclampsia, worsening of the kidney function, recurrent urinary tract infection, more liability to develop thrombosis, more risk of anemia, and more risk of development of gestational diabetes if she was not already diabetic. The fetal risks during the pregnancy include intrauterine growth restriction, more risk of preterm delivery, especially in iatrogenic due to concern about the fetal or maternal well-being, and congenital kidney disease. This will depend on the history, especially if the lady has a renal transplant for a congenital condition like polycystic ovaries. The next question will be, what is the course of her antenatal care? and how you will monitor the mother and the baby during the pregnancy and during labor. How to reduce the hair risks during the pregnancy and during labor. So again, to be organized, how to reduce it during the pregnancy and how to reduce it during labor. During the pregnancy, antenatal care should be under multidisciplinary care and this is communication with colleagues. It will be in a consultant lead unit, including consultant obstetrician, local transplant team, the nephrologist, the endocrinologist, especially that this patient is diabetic, and the specialist midwifery support. This patient should have frequent monitoring of her blood pressure and protein 
during pregnancy and the blood pressure should be maintained at levels less than 140 over 90 millimeter mercury. Also regular renal function monitoring during pregnancy and the assessment for hair risk of thrombosis should be done. So these are the points to be done during pregnancy. If the patient is not diabetic, you have to consider the oral glucose tolerance test at the booking visit and to be remitted again at 24 weeks because this lady is at high risk because of the corticosteroids she is receiving. During labor, as we mentioned before, vaginal delivery is the recommended mode of delivery for women with renal transplant after consideration of hair wishes. This is a point of safety to be done in a consultant-led obstetric unit. Usually the transplant organ will be extra retinal, so it doesn't obstruct the vaginal delivery. The cesarean section will be only indicated for obstetric reasons. Induction of labor can be offered in patients with renal transplant if there is no indication for cesarean section. The timing of delivery, as we mentioned, it's up to 40 weeks. At least it will be 37 weeks after fetal maturity. You may intervene earlier if there is any evidence of placental insufficiency or if the patient developed preeclampsia. Uh, induction of labor with prostaglandin, the dose will depend on the bishop score and the prostaglandin induction is safe in patients with renal transplant. The induction agents like prostaglandin and oxytocin are safe to be used in patients with renal transplant. But during labor, the patient should be frequently monitored and the baby will be monitored by continuous CTG. It is a point of safety again. Very important in any patient with a renal transplant to monitor the input and the output chart. The fluid balance has to be maintained and has to be observed. The intravenous hydrocortisone has to be given during delivery. Stress dose of intravenous hydrocortisone, 50 to 100 milligram every six to eight hours during the time of labor and until the patient is able to tolerate oral medication. This point is a point of assessment of the applied clinical knowledge. Next question will be, any special precautions during the cesarean section for such lady if she will go for cesarean section? The answer here, it includes so many points. You will first, you have to start with mentioning the point that there is risk of trauma to the renal graft at cesarean section, which is one to two percent. So the consultant should be present during the time of cesarean and the transplant team also has to be around or at least informed to be ready. You should consider a midline skin incision in this case to reduce the risk of trauma to the graft. This is a point of clinical knowledge. The uterine incision can be transverse lower segment incision. So the skin incision will be midline, but the uterine incision will be transverse. The renal graft can be located by ultrasound immediately before the skin incision. This is a point of clinical knowledge. Again, the cesarean section has to be done by the consultant in presence of the transplant team. And the patient should be given a course of corticosteroid therapy to reduce the risk of transient tachypnea of the newborn. To reduce the risk because these babies, even if they receive the corticosteroids, still there is a risk of transient tachypnea of the newborn in these babies. Again, in cesarean or normal delivery, the patient will need a stress dose of uh, steroids as long as she was taking more than 7.5 milligram of prednisolone per day for more than two weeks during pregnancy. So she will require 50 to 100 milligram every six to eight hours during delivery and until 
they will be able to tolerate the oral medication. The next question, what are the precautions in the management of the third stage of labor? Active management of the third stage is very important in this case. Hypertension may be a contraindication for giving ergometrine containing agents in management of the third stage of labor or postpartum hemorrhage. The use of oxytocin and prostaglandins like mesoprostol and carboprost, it can be given, these agents can be given as renal impairment is not a contraindication to their use and there is no recommendation to reduce the dose of these agents in patients with renal impairment. Again, again, very important point, you have to properly monitor the fluid intake and output in these patients. The last question here in this case, if there is any special recommendation for the postpartum care of this lady. So again, this lady is at a very high risk of developing venous thromboembolism, especially with high level of proteinuria. So thromboprophylaxis, and to be continued for six weeks postnatal, if low molecular weight heparin, with low molecular weight heparin, if there is heavy proteinuria or according to the VTE risk assessment, and this lady was already on low molecular weight heparin, so she will continue for six weeks postnatal. Very important to give the patient information regarding her follow-up appointments with the nephrologist and the renal transplant team after delivery, if indicated. Uh, recommendation regarding the newborn, the pediatrician has to be informed, especially if the baby is on a steroid, because this is increases the infection and the thymus hypoplasia and adrenal insufficiency in these babies. Babies with re in women with renal transplant likely to need a special care admission or neonatal admission due to transient tachypnea of the newborn, even if you give steroids. The baby is exposed to biologic drugs in utero, should therefore avoid live vaccines. So if the lady was in biologic agents, you have to avoid giving live vaccines during the first six months of life. So this is a very important point to be mentioned if the patient is on biologic drugs. At the point of breastfeeding, uh, she can breastfeed her baby. The systemic side effects uh, of prednisolone on the infant is unlikely with a dose less than 40 milligram daily. And also as a cyprine and cyclosporine in this case are safe during breastfeeding. The final point during uh, uh, the postpartum period would be the contraception. Uh, safe and effective contraception for women with renal transplant are progesterone containing contraception like progesterone only pills, the myrena or the progesterone implant. So these progesterone containing contraceptions are safe for ladies with renal transplant. And always remember in the any patient in the postpartum period or post-operative or post-delivery, remember the red flag signs that you have to mention to the patient when she has to come back urgently to the hospital. So this is a station. These are the possible questions in this station and how to answer each one of them. Hope it will be of benefit and it solves the questions in your mind regarding this station. Please, if you find it useful, please remember me in your briars in this holy month and share it with your friends. Thank you so much and stay safe.